All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to do something really cool as usual. In this case, I want to find all the differentiable functions with the property that f of x plus y equals to f of x times f of y. And this is a bit improvised, by the way, so bear with me. I thought of that when I, on my road from LA to Irvine, so it's a nice thing of getting stuck in traffic. And so, first of all, in this function, uh, let's, us, let's figure out what f of 0 is. So if x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 in this equation, you get f of 0 equals to f of 0 times f of 0. That also doesn't work. So, in other words, f of 0 equals to f of 0 squared. And the only solutions to x equals to x squared is simply x equals to 0 or x equals to 1. So first of all, we just know that f of 0 equals to 0 or f of 0 equals to 1. And we'll use this fact in a second. All right, and of course this holds, you know, uh, for... Um, any function, not just continuous or not. So in particular, if f of 0 is 2, already we can eliminate that. Now, as I said, um, there might be other solutions to this. I don't know. But um, let's assume the following fact. Let's just assume that f is differentiable at 0. So assumption. And it's very important. Um, we don't assume anything at other points. So f is differentiable at 0. And let's call c equals to f prime of 0. And I'm claiming from this, we can already figure out what f is. Because let's not try to calculate the derivative of f at any other point if it exists. So. What is f prime of x? Well, that is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, provided this exists, okay? Then this equals to, so now let's use our property, limit h goes to 0 of f of x times f of h minus f of x over h. I just use the fact that f of x plus h is f of x times f of h. By our formula with y equals to h. And now notice this f of x, well, you can factor it out. So limit h goes to 0. f of x times f of h minus 1 over h. And then this f of x comes out, and we get f of x, and then limit h goes to 0 of f of h minus 1 over h. And I guess just assume that f of 0 equals to 1, and I, I come back to that later. Okay, then um, in particular, this thing just becomes that the limit as h goes to 0 of f of h minus f of 0 over h, again, assuming f of 0 is 1, and that's just, a that's just f prime of 0, if you think about it, which we called c. So f prime of x equals to f of x times c. So f prime of x equals to c f of x. And let me see then. <laughs> then I guess one fact you need to know, man, I should have said c equals to For example, assuming things are positive, take f of x to the 1 over c. And let's differentiate that. Then we get 1 over c f of x to the 1 over c minus 1 times f prime of x. 
And then what this becomes is 1 over c f of x, 1 over c minus 1, and then f prime is just c f of x. The c's cancel out. Okay, I guess this function is deceased, okay? And, <laughs> sorry. And then all we get is just f of x to the 1 over c. Very good. Okay, so that's what we need. So in particular, f of x of 1 over c satisfies the equation y prime equals to y. And if you plug in f at 0, assuming again f of 0 is 1, then we get y of 0 equals to 1. And this is, by definition, the function e to the x. So y of x equals to e to the x. So f of x to the 1 over c equals to e to the x. So f of x equals to e to the cx. In other words, the only functions that satisfy f of x plus y equals to f of x times f of y with f of 0 equals to 1 is just e to the something x. And lastly, what if f of 0 is 0? Then it turns out f has to be the 0 function because f of x plus 0 then would be f of x times f of 0. And this is 0, and we just get 0. And this is f of x. So f of x would be identically the 0 function. And this also works as f is 0 at any other point. All right, so I hope you like this improvised session. So uh, if you want to see more math and more stuff like this, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.